Hello there. Good morning, good evening, good day, wherever you are. It's time to talk Star Wars. Howdy, how is everyone doing? Welcome back to uh, another stream. So, uh, we've got quite a bit to go through today, guys. So it should be uh, a pretty pretty fun one if i'm honest with you what we've got here we've got uh, mostly acolyte stuff to talk about um some general star wars news what's going on at the moment and what we can expect in the near future as well uh yeah and then we can just chill out afterwards i was thinking watch some trailers watch some stuff and just uh, have a little bit of fun with it so how is everyone doing welcome back to another stream uh, if you're new then of course we do the stream every monday uh, it's gonna be 9 p.m uk time uh Pretty much has always been around that anyway, but we're going to nail that time and try and stick to it. It's kind of fluctuated between half eight and nine, you know, over time. Uh, but we're going to try and stick to nine. I feel like that works better for, for most people anyway. So let's uh, let's see who we got popping in. So we've got Jedi Geek. Hello there. Hello there. Uh, I'm very excited for the Acolyte show. Cool, man. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, you know. Uh, there's... Um, no, for varying reasons, there's a lot of uh, negativity going around online at the moment about it. Uh, I, for one, you know, I'm, I'm I'm positive. I'm going into it. I'm quite positive. You know, uh, I'm not gonna, you know, hate something or dislike something I haven't seen yet. So, yeah, I'm on that hype train with you, buddy. Absolutely. Uh, we've got Harry P in there. How you doing, mate? I'm I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. You know, uh, it's been one of them weird days. You know, them days just don't go to plan. Not a bad day, but it's just you have your day structured out in a certain way um, and it, it doesn't work out. Um, but it is what it is. We're here. We're here. And we got Melissa in there. Hello there. This is becoming a little thing now, isn't it? Hello there. I've done it randomly in the intro. I never do it. And if you haven't watched the stream before, I never do it. Um, and now it's now it's a thing. I think that could be, I think that could catch on. I think that could absolutely catch on. So before we get into, you know, the nitty gritty of Star Wars and the Acolyte and, and anything else that you guys you know, want to talk about, uh, throw out onto the table and discuss, uh, I want to ask, did anyone do anything special this weekend? Because... There was a certain, uh, a certain release this weekend, and uh, I participated like the good, like the good little fanboy I am. I participated in it. So, in case you guys didn't know, maybe you've been living under a rock for you know the last couple of years or whatnot. Uh, it does appear that Star Wars is re-releasing the Phantom Menace 25th anniversary tickets went on sale this weekend for the weekend of May the fourth, commencing on May the third. Now. Uh, let's let's pull this up, have a little look, because apparently it's been an update to this article as well from the official Star Wars website, which we very rarely go through on this channel, <laughs> as you probably know if you've been following for a while. So, uh, Star Wars The Phantom Menace celebrates 25 years with Return to Theaters, updated. So, I went and grabbed my tickets uh, this weekend for it. I went for May the 4th. I'm absolutely buzzing, so excited. Uh, there's there's only a few Star Wars movies I haven't managed to watch in the theaters yet. And uh, actually, I'm curious to know, on that note as well, what Star Wars movies have you seen in the theaters? Or, or, or is it easier to put what ones you've missed? So for me so far, I haven't seen The Phantom Menace yet in the theaters. I haven't seen Attack of the Clones. I saw Revenge of the Sith back in 2005. Um, and then since then, all the new ones that have come out Force Awakens, Rogue One, all the others, uh, I've been to him and I've been to many of them multiple times. Revenge of the Sith, Soaring the Fears, 2005. I was, a, I was a little lad. I was a little lad. Just Star Wars was yay big, uh, but he had a blast of a time. So I'm looking forward to seeing episode one and, uh, and we'll go from there. I've actually managed to catch, uh, you know, fair chunk of the original trilogy in, in the theaters as well. Um, a New Hope, and Empire Strikes Back. I watched both of them just before Christmas in, in my local theater. Uh, Return of the Jedi still eludes me. Uh, if you guys know, that is my favorite Star Wars movie, Return of the Jedi. Uh, one of my favorites. It flickers between that and Revenge of the Sith. It depends what mood I'm in. Uh, yeah, so Return of the Jedi still eludes me, but hopefully this time around we'll nail it. So 
Start your pod racer engines. Star Wars The Phantom Menace celebrates 25 years with a return to cinemas on May the 3rd and tickets are on sale now. Available uh, available everywhere tickets are sold. In addition to battle droids, pod racers, Jar Jar, Darth Maul and all of the episode one goodness, fans will also be treated to an exclusive look at The Acolyte, the upcoming Disney Plus series as part of The Phantom Menace screenings. I was just checking because <laughs> I make that mistake sometimes. I was just checking the microphone was on, and it is fantastic. So uh, yeah, apparently at the end of the uh, screening for the acolyte, you do get to see. Uh, sorry, end of the screening for the Phantom Menace, you do get to see a clip of the acolyte, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I didn't actually. They done this something similar to this, didn't they? When they released Andor, they re-released Rogue One into the theaters, and they attached. Um, like a sneak peek of Andor onto that. I didn't get to see it, but hopefully this time I will. So to coincide with the re-release of The Phantom Menace, artist Matt Ferguson has created a beautiful new poster, which you can see here. So apparently, now don't hold me to this. I will not be liable if this doesn't happen for you guys, of course. Uh, but apparently, if you go and see this um, 25th anniversary special edition of The Phantom Menace, you actually get this poster. Uh, that's what I've been reading elsewhere. I don't know if it's just select theaters or not. Um, or if it's all of them. I have no idea. Uh, but apparently this poster is floating around for free. So, uh, to be honest with you, that's that's one of the big draws that I want to actually go and watch it. But uh, no, I'm looking forward to it nonetheless. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and for the Acolyte screen, and I hope that it's in all theatres as well, not just in select ones. Because I'll be really disappointed if I don't get that at the end. Um, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm doing all right, uh, Melissa. Thanks for asking. How are you doing? You all right? All good? All good in the hood. My uh, KKIMC. Hi there. Hello there. Welcome to the channel. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, thanks for choosing to kick it back with us on a Monday night or a Monday afternoon or a Monday morning, wherever you are. Um, I just heard that Select Theatres will be showing episode uh, four through to nine. I'm crap at Roman numerals. I assume that means four. So basically, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this actually as well. Um, they're actually putting all the movies. It's not just the Phantom Menace. They're actually whacking all the first nine, uh, you know, Skywalker saga movies back into the theaters. It's gonna be like a marathon, I believe. Um, I done the maths. I done the maths. I think I done them uh, a couple of days ago, and it turns out you probably have to spend like twenty hours and forty odd minutes. Uh, roughly in the theaters if you want to watch them all which is absolutely insane um, if you're doing that then then props off to you you only have to spare 20 minutes or 20 hours from your day if anything why don't they re-release the siege of mandalore uh, the clone wars movie and highlight chapters from the mandoverse that would be cool that would be cool um i think the thing is though they know they put the movies in there it just draw that much of a bigger crowd you know uh, movies just tend to do that i think it's just about getting some of that box office cheddar cheese into the uh into the disney pockets but it'd be cool to go and see me theaters as well so i'm not complaining too much on that one um i've watched all of them at the cinema um there is a nine film marathon would you go if uh you had the chance oh hmm. that is a question that is a question i would i would go to select i would go to select uh movies i don't i don't know if i would have it in me to sit in the same seat for like 20 odd hours i don't i don't know if I would have that in me. There's only so much post-mix Coca-Cola I can drink before I start to feel a bit iffy, I reckon. Uh, so much popcorn and hot dogs. Um, so I have actually been kind of debating this as well to myself. So I'm definitely going to go and watch The Phantom Menace. Tickets are booked. And I went in there and uh, I was thinking to myself that, you know, this, uh, this lady is serving me. She's going to look at me like I'm some sort of weirdo. It doesn't come out for a few months yet. Um, I went in there and there's actually quite a few seats sold out in that showing already, uh, which is like May the 4th, which is insane. Uh, so I managed to snag tickets for that. All good. I was kind of thinking as well, uh, you know, it'd be quite cool to go back and watch Revenge of the Sith um, because the first Star Wars movie I ever saw in the cinema was Revenge of the Sith and I haven't seen it in the cinema since. Back in 2005, 19, yeah, 19 years ago. So it'd be kind of nice to go and watch Revenge. Um, and then I might go Return of the Jedi. Then I might go Return of the Jedi. Because I haven't seen that. That's the only movie from the OT I haven't seen in the cinemas. And then I was kind of thinking, well, you know, that's three movies. And then I was thinking, maybe, maybe I'll chuck in The Force Awakens, you know. 
Uh, that carries some good vibes, some good memories. You know, going to the cinema opening night for The Force Awakens. You know, first time, the first Star Wars, well, the second Star Wars movie I ever watched in the, in the theaters. Uh, but there was a big old gap of ten years between them, so that might carry a bit of a nostalgia. So I don't know. I'm playing with the, I'm playing with the Force Awakens, but I'm definitely up for going to see uh, Episode Three and Episode Six in there. Um, yeah. What about you? Would you go? And uh, yeah, guys, drop it in the chat. Are you going to the Phantom Menace re-release? Or if not, are you going to check out one of the other movies that come out? Uh, drop it in. Drop your thoughts in. Uh, I, I agree. The new poster for the, Man in, the, the, Man in Mere, the Phantom Menace looks great. Yeah, I absolutely think so, man. I, and I really want it. I really want it on the wall. If all goes well, the Monday after that re-release, you'll see that poster right up there. If it all goes well. Um, if if that Monday after and I come on a screen on a stream and that poster's not behind me, don't don't mention it. Do not mention it because I will be a little bit sensitive, <laughs> a little bit sensitive about the subject to say the least. So as we were kind of talking about, you know, I wanted to talk about this anyway. As we were kind of talking about the other kind of movies they were re-releasing, so we can just run through what they've said officially on that uh, before we get into the juice, before we get into the acolyte sort of stuff and. Uh, and move on. I just wanted to keep you guys updated and informed, you know. I know not everyone is bang on it constantly, you know, and I kind of am. So I wanted to keep keep you guys up to date, informed, make sure you know what's going on so you don't miss out on some cool opportunities if you do decide to take them in your select theatres. So Skywalker Saga Marathon coming to theatres on May the 4th. Up updated as well, apparently. Nice. So this will be a Star Wars Day long remembered. So Lucasfilm has announced that in celebration of the 25th anniversary of Star Wars The Phantom Menace, fans will have the chance to experience the entire Skywalker saga in theaters this May the 4th, also known as Star Wars Day. This includes all nine episodic films in chronological order. Okay. So they're quite precise there. It's not like they're just whacking them all out at the same time in the theaters. So I take it it's like, a, maybe one or two screens at your theater um that's going to be playing star wars in order so you like you can jump in for whatever one you want if there's availability i guess um but i guess you could literally just sit in there for the whole run um this includes all nine episodic uh, episodic films in chronological order so you've got phantom menace attack of the clones revenge of the sith a new hope empire uh, jedi the force awakens the last jedi and the rise of skywalker in addition an exclusive look at the acolyte for the upcoming disney plus series set during the high republic era will be part of the phantom menace screen so you're only going to get the acolyte on the phantom menace screening so if you don't go to episode one you drop in episode three which i'm sure some people will because episode three is a is a dope movie um then you, you're going to miss out on the acolyte essentially so, I mean, are they really going to stick them all in there in one day? Like, we do know the Phantom Menace re-release comes out on Friday the 3rd uh, for the weekend of the 4th. So, are they uh, are they on the 3rd then going to go Phantom Menace, Clones, Revenge? And on the 4th do, uh, you know, the OT? And then on the 5th do the, the, uh, the sequel trilogy? I don't know. Does anyone know if, if they elaborated on that or what's going on there? Or, or are we literally all just go in there for the 20 hours? <laughs> yeah, let me know. Um, because they don't really make it too clear. I mean, is the theatre even open? Are theatres generally open for like 21 hours a day? I, I don't think they are. <laughs> I've watched them all at the cinema. That is that is sick. You, you are, you are um, one of the lucky few. One of the lucky few. Well, I guess a lot of people have. Uh, not me. I was pretty young when the first ones came out unfortunately because i'd have been on it um i'd probably go to see a new hope or the empire strikes back i already saw so uh, you go see episode four or five yeah solid choices i already saw the 40th anniversary of return of the jedi last summer so never would i watch any re-release of the sequel trilogy they don't exist to me says uh, anthony um yeah i mean i've watched uh, last year i watched because uh, it wasn't like a wide thing but my theater actually just whacked star wars movies in over christmas and i was like well you know what one day it was a new hope and then the next day it was uh, empire and then return jedi i went to the first two got really ill for the last one which is the one i really wanted to go to more than all of them <laughs> because it was the 40th year and i had the hat and everything um i really wanted to go and i felt really ill i didn't make it big regret so i have to make up for it this time around man absolutely 
have to make up for it this time around. I'll be gutted if I don't make it. I, I will make it. I will make it. There's no ifs, buts, or maybes. I am going to be there. I am absolutely going to be there. Okay. Okay. How's the poll doing? My poll's not coming up. Yes. Nice. Okay. So you're all feeling extra Star Warsy today. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, are you going to have a party for Star Wars Bad Batch Season Three, Episode Nine? Uh, I haven't thought about it to be honest. Now I done a I done a couple for Andor when Andor came out, um, but then I didn't for Ahsoka, um, and I haven't so far. I didn't for Mando Three. I haven't for the Bad Batch. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll see. I'll see what the schedule looks like. I'll see if I can make it. Um, if not, then I'll definitely, uh, definitely try and get one in for the uh, the season final for sure. And if that's something that you guys would like going forwards, then I'm definitely open to it for sure. If people want it, I'll do it. If people want it, I'll do it. Absolutely. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, about what you're all here for, shall we? About what you're all really here for. And that is, I guess. I guess the acolyte. Now, do you know what's kind of frustrating for me? As someone who you know does streams and and makes YouTube videos and the rest of it, I've been you know this the Star Wars channel's been going for a while now. You know we've covered various projects. I think the first one we covered was the Book of Boba Fett, um, and then since then you've had uh, Kenobi, Mando, Ahsoka, Andor. You know you've had a few projects, Towns of the Jedi, um, obviously the Bad Batch. Never have I ever, 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 ever had a problem streaming a Star Wars trailer um, until until the Acolyte. Uh, they, 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 they flagged me down. I had to trim bits out of my 20 minute stream when it first came out, which was bonkers. Hopefully it was just a mistake. It's all being corrected by now. Um, but if not, you know, we should still be able to do it while it's live. It's just after the stream ends, I might have to snip a few bits out. So this, I guess it's a perk of you guys being here while we're live, you know, and not watching it on the replay. Although I do appreciate both, of course. So let's talk about the Acolyte. Before we get into, into the Acolyte, let's just refresh ourselves with the trailer and, uh, then we'll officially start the Acolyte, the Acolyte segment. I'm going to have to turn the music down a tad, aren't I? There we go. Okay. So kind of done the mini it breakdown. It doesn't make sense. What happened? I sense the darkness. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. Uh, just real quick, guys, as well. This is something I've picked up in the last few days. Um, so you see this character here. Uh, she's a witch. And, you know, when you, feel, when you hear the word witch in Star Wars, you automatically kind of go to the Night Sisters, you know, in the Clone Wars. Um, Maybe even in your Soka show these days as well. Uh, she's a witch, but she's not a night sister. She's not from that clan. She's not from that coven. Um, she's like a complete different kind of witch that we've. I don't think we've seen before. If I'm honest with you, in Star Wars, there could be a complete new concept there. Power and who is allowed to use it? What is that? Oh. Wow. Okay, so uh, I, I personally, I quite like that trailer. I know a lot of people have a problem with it. I mean, we'll look. We'll have a look in a moment. We'll have a butcher's, shall we? Let's look, because I can see the dislike ratios and whatnot. Uh, yeah, wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Check this out, guys. <laughs> oh, look at that. Uh, 177k uh, likes, 519,000 dislikes. Jeez. Wow. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that before. That is, that is, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Um, okay, well, let's kind of talk about it live, shall we? Before, before we move on to anything else, the Acolyte trailer, for what it is, do you like it? Yes or no? 
drop a yes or a no into the chat. Do you like the Acolyte trailer? Is it for you? Um, I, I want to kind of gauge where you guys are at with it, you know, because I personally, when I watch this trailer, yes, there are elements in there where I see some people complaining. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Well, that's that's actually pretty valid and you're probably spot on. Uh, overall, as a trailer, I fairly, you know, I'm fairly happy with it. You know, um, it doesn't really explain too much. But I'm okay with that. It kind of just whets the appetite. It's just a teaser trailer. We'll see where it goes when the full trailer comes out in, uh, well, when's the full trailer come out? Most likely June. Most likely the full official Acolyte trailer, I think, will drop on Star Wars Day on May the 4th. Uh, they usually drop the four official trailers about a month before the show comes out, um, which is a bit longer. So you might be looking at about a two minute, uh, two and a half minutes, two minutes, 45 second trailer. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, it might give a little bit more away. But overall, you know, first impressions, I'm pretty OK with it. I'm trying to I'm trying to think how how has it been ratioed this badly? Like 177 to 519,000. Wow, man. Wow. Um Tick's base place uh, says, when does episode nine drop? So Monday for us in the UK, uh, it comes out Wednesday morning, 8 p 8 a.m. 8 p.m. 8 a.m. Wednesday morning. Um, for you guys in the States, I think that's around about two or three in the morning for you guys, right? On a Wednesday, I believe. Uh, it's strange how the boy closes his eyes before he tells them to close their eyes. I did not notice that Jedi geek. Let's, uh, let's go back and check that out, shall we? Is it just here? Let's 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 just play the uh, the the youngling sing again, quick. Your eyes. Oh, they're already closed. Close. Your uh, hang on. Close your eyes. Oh yeah, he did, didn't he? <laughs> Jedi geeks analyzed it. He's your analyzed eyes. it. He's seen this. Uh, deceive you. Oh, sick. Love the look of the new trailer. Yeah, I, I quite like it as well. If a Soka trailer and Force Awakens trailer was a 10, this was still good. I'll give it an 8.5 with mystery. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best trailer. You know, it's not, not the best trailer. But I don't think it deserves... You know, to, to me, I don't think it deserves this level of uh, wow, you know? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, you know... People that have said so there, they, you know, they're pretty much, you know, all right with the trailer. I think, you know, this might be a bit hot. I think news has spread about the initial, uh, about the initial high amount of dislikes this trailer got. I think news has spread and then like wildfire, it's kind of, you know, gathered momentum and people are now watching a trailer just to dislike it and make that ratio higher. I think that's what's happening, if I'm honest with you. Um, but we'll see. I guess all will be revealed when the show comes out, uh, for sure. So that's kind of broke us into talking about the Acolyte overall. Overall. So let's uh, let's go through this new article uh, for the Acolyte and see what we can learn from it, shall we? So this came out just after the trailer. So uh, let's dig a little bit deeper on this. Should we get some music back on? Bum, bum. Okay, so Collider. The acolyte Leslie Headland teases Clone Wars references and Jedi at the height of their power. So the showrunner also talks about how the series will be similar to Andor and The Mandalorian and the possibility of an Acolyte Season 2. So, there is more on the horizon for Star Wars fans with the upcoming series The Acolyte. The series is set many years before the events of The Phantom Menace during the High Republic era, which has yet to be explored on screen. I mean, this is kind of why I'm a little bit, uh, not a little bit. This is this is aiding to the hype that I have, uh, purely because it's going back to a time that we've never seen before in live action. Yeah, you know we've got some books and and uh, you know other related material like that. Um, yes, we've got an animated. Uh, show Young Jedi Adventures. To be honest, I haven't watched it, um, so I can't really comment too much on that. Uh, but this is the first time we're really digging in this far back in live action, and the characters, for the most part, I mean, I'm going to make an in-depth video on you know the possibility of what characters could appear in the Acolyte that we know already. Uh, but for the most part, I feel like it's going to be a complete different. Well, it will be a complete different set of Jedi. 
some of the characters some of the dark side characters will be completely new to us but there's also the chance that we might get some familiar dark side characters that we still haven't seen on the big screen before or even on the small screen you know outside of maybe some of the games or some of the stories some of the legends content uh so i'm really looking forward to that as well you know it's uh it's kind of you know just on the cusp of reaching where we were in episode one but it's not too close so i've been doing a little bit of research you know there's a lot of people talking online at the moment is it a 50 years before um before the phantom menace is it 100 years before the phantom menace the conclusion i landed on is that they probably don't even know themselves you know it's a little bit like the mandalorian season three and the book of boba fett um you you hear different interpretations on how long grogu was training with luke i think the acolyte is kind of similar in in its relation to the phantom menace um i think it's anywhere from 50 to 100 years so maybe we could probably land on about 75 years you know they're not being too fixed about it it seems uh, but it's a it's it's a fair enough a way to be a bit different, but not too far that we you know won't notice the scenes, some of the characters that will pop up. So the new Star Wars series is a mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. A former Padawan reunites with her Jedi Master to investigate a series of crimes. But the forces they confront are more sinister than they ever anticipated. The Acolyte stars Amanda Stenberg. So, I mean, look, the synopsis here, a former Padawan reunites with her Jedi Master to investigate a series of crimes. So the Padawan's got to be Amanda Stenberg, you know, May. And, um, you know, uh, the, the Master has to be uh, Lee Jung Jae, who plays Master's soul. So I thought this show was about the dark side mostly and it was going to follow the dark side and it's going to paint the jedi as this you know the good guys but it, it, it it's all from a certain point of view in a way um but to me it sounds like a mandala stem but it sounds like good cop bad cop a little bit uh, yesterday collider's own steve wintrub uh, i think i pronounced that right and i say that every time <laughs> i read an article of his or, or about him um had the chance to talk with the acolyte showrunner leslie headland and discuss its similarities with andor and the mandalorian i mean two very uh you know contrasting shows there in terms of style and pacing uh clone war references depicting jedi at the height of their power and whether or not the series had the potential to expand into a season two in addition to star wars Headland also chatted about the future of the next. Oh, we don't care about Russian doll too much. Uh, well, you might, but uh, I don't. So we're not going to talk about the Russian doll today. Um, so how does the Acolyte trailer set up the upcoming Star Wars series? So jumping into Star Wars, the trailer does a great tease of what the series is about because it's like a teaser trailer essentially. How much did you work with Disney on marketing, and how much is it sort of them saying to you, "Here's the trailer." Edlin goes on to say, weirdly, I was very wary, of course, of being like, oh my God, I'm going to make some trailer. I was nervous. I'd given them a couple of ideas. I was like, here are some things that I think are interesting. Here are some moments that I think were important narratively to get in there. And then they sent me something back that was perfect. I was absolutely shocked. I guess I shouldn't say that because they're my boss, but I was so in love with what they sent me and it felt so, and I felt so understood by that. They understood the show and they understood what to pick out in order to properly set up the series and also give you just enough that you won't give in too much away. As the series gets closer to coming out, get ready for the full trailer. That's a whole different story. And Headland agrees. Yeah, that's a whole different story, I'm sure. We haven't even gotten into it. Yeah, uh, we haven't even gotten into it. So surely they must be working on the full trailer right now. Because, I mean, look, this trailer was very similar to what we had at the Star Wars celebration back in last year in April. Um, and a couple of weeks before this trailer actually came out, they were still trying to pull it together and get it, get it ready uh, with a few additional shots, removing some scenes. So chances are they're probably actually working on the full trailer now rather than having it in the canon. Good to go. Um, Headland. So oh, the question is... Is the tease trailer footage, so the footage that we've all seen now, is it from the first three episodes or from the entire series? Now, the reason they asked this is because typically with um, with the other Star Wars shows we've had, uh, like The Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, um, not too sure about Ahsoka, if I'm honest with you, it might be, um, they tend to pull from the first two, three, maybe four episodes at a push, and then the rest of it are going in blank. And I think, you know, actually, looking back at The Mandalorian Season 3, I think they actually went up to five episodes. Um, that we saw in that trailer um, and then we didn't see the last three 
So Headland goes on to say, it's from a lot of episodes. It's not from a whole series, but I would say it's from four or five episodes. So yeah, pretty much about uh, the same as Mando 3 in terms of what footage we've seen and where that relates to the episodes. The Acolyte will have elements from Andor and The Mandalorian, including Clone Wars references. Uh, so is the series more Andor or The Mandalorian? I think it's in between. I think it's very much in between, meaning it's a serialized storyline. It's not episodic. There's no overarching story that's told over the course of eight episodes. And to be honest, that's the type of uh, the series that I tend to prefer. You know, I don't like... Um, and I think the Bad Batch have, have really, you know, nailed that on this season, to be honest with you. Um, whereas, like, season one, season two of the Bad Batch, I felt like, you know, you progressed the story a little bit and then you kind of got lost and then you kind of came back to it. Then you got lost again and came back to it. Um, this time around, what they're doing, and I hope kind of the Acolyte follows suit as well. They're kind of building up to the overall story slowly uh, but in each episode you are getting a little bit to take away that kind of pushes that story forwards um, as well as adding in some fun and some other Star Wars bits and pieces in there so hopefully they kind of you know do something similar to that Andor done it really well Mandalorian season 3 didn't do it so well season 2 didn't really do that either um, even though there was cool episodes in season 2 so and to be honest I'm not saying I don't like season 2 I do love season 2 and I like 3 3 wasn't too bad but it wasn't wasn't as good in my opinion of course um it is a mystery thriller meaning each episode you have to watch in order to get more information and start to get invested i found with andor it really built into something that was exciting and had this incredible payoff at the end we were definitely trying to do something similar narratively but i would say in terms of the more mandalorian aspects of it there are a lot of alien references a lot of clone war references a lot of original trilogy references of course you know clone wars hasn't happened yet um, but there might be some you know nods to it some movements taking place around the galaxy that will eventually lead into the clone wars a lot of the original trilogy references basically all of the stuff that i love about star wars and i think are recognizable but no uh, no post empire or current empire iconography so no stormtroopers we don't anything we don't have anything to rely on that anchors you in the skywalker saga or post skywalker saga which makes total sense because you know even though it's happened for us in terms of the story that's all still to come uh, in the trailer there's a line someone is killing jelly it doesn't make sense um what can you tease about that line well i think it's really difficult to defeat a jedi it doesn't make any sense who can do that who would be powerful enough to kill a jedi um especially at the height of their power see that's uh, that's an interesting take on it because initially when i heard that line in a trailer someone's killing jedi it doesn't make sense or, or whatever it said something similar to that effect anyway initially it struck me as that jedi speaking them lines now if i'm if i'm correct here in my acolyte knowledge which is still in its infancy as you could have guessed if I'm correct here, that Jedi that spoke them lines is known as like a class A pupil. He's like top of the class, um, probably a little bit goody two shoes in a way, does it all by the book. Um, he's like a straight A student in the Jedi Order. So for him to say people killing Jedi, murdering Jedi, whatever, and it doesn't make sense. I kind of took that as him being naive to that could happen. Um, whereas, you know, Leslie Hedden's actually come out and said, you know, or actually he's saying that because it's really difficult to kill a Jedi. It shouldn't really be possible from who's known to be around in the galaxy at this point in time, uh, which shows how oblivious the Jedi are at this point to the dark presences around them and, you know, off out in the shadows. And I would consider this to be the height of their power because in the Phantom Menace, they're not sensing a Sith presence to the point where they don't know what Palpatine's presence is doing or even what his intentions are. So I would say... As you move further back, I think you get the Jedi at the height of their power, so it doesn't make sense because who would be able to do that? Mm. That's, that's added a bit of clarity for me, at least. Um, the Jedi will look uh, a little different from what Star Wars fans are used to in the Acolyte. Jodie Turner-Smith in the teaser trailer has a line, this is about power and who is allowed to use it. What would you like to say about that? I've always seen Star Wars as well. I wouldn't say all the Star Wars. Oh, I've always seen Star Wars as well. I wouldn't say all of Star Wars. I think Star Wars is really complicated. But I think one of the themes of Star Wars is usually underdog versus institutional threat, right? That's one aspect of it. And to me, in that particular era, the Jedi are not a threat at all. They are a benevolent, balanced, I think well-intentioned, beautiful institution that has amassed an enormous amount of power. So the question becomes, is it right for an institution to have that much power? I think that sometimes 
people get a little caught up in the morality of, oh, the good people can use power and the bad people can't. And it's more about who is allowed to amass power and who is allowed to use it for their own ends. Okay. Uh, I get what she's saying there, but... Mm, okay. Uh, what if you are force sensitive and you don't want to become a Jedi? What happens then? Are you not allowed to utilize your power? George would say that it fades without training. But is there no training going on at all in the whole galaxy? No one has figured out a way to do that beyond the Jedi? Obviously, we know that the Sith are still doing the Rule of Two at this point, so there's a training aspect going on in that sense. You have Force Witches, similar to Night Sith, who are training each other. Okay, so Force Witches is uh, what she's referred to here. Um, who are similar to Night Sisters who are training each other, we know that. There are no Night Sisters in the show. But we just know that there are different factions and even in the eu and in the high republic there's talk of force cults that have decided to retreat from society and now i'm getting too nerdy but anyway point being it is an institution allowed to ask um it is an institution allowed to amass that amount of power even if their attentions are are good i get what she's saying there so she's kind of saying look the jedi are only you know the force isn't exclusive to the jedi and that was kind of a message that luke kind of tried to explain to Rey in the sequels, didn't he? You know, the Force can be in balance without the Jedi being there. The Jedi don't represent balance in the Force, essentially. You can just have the good, you can have the bad. You don't have to have the title that comes with it. Uh, now, I think it's kind of along them lines as well. You know, you've got the Jedi, they're training. Does that mean they're the only ones that are allowed to use the Force in the galaxy? Can someone else like me over there, can I not levitate a rock if I wanted to without being part of the Jedi? Um... There was a great shot in a trailer of all these Jedi lighting up their lightsabers, getting ready to fight. Is that a one-off in the series? What can you tease about that fight? Because I think fans are going to go crazy when they see that. So Hebden goes on to say, I think what I could say about that without spoiling anything is that when I was talking about the Jedi in this particular era, I thought that they wouldn't pull out their lightsabers very often in this era. There aren't battle droids to fight. There isn't a dark saber. It exists at this point, but it isn't definitely not around. So why would they pull their sabers out? Um, they would only pull their sabers out if they felt like they were really being threatened. And so what I can say is that they were very threatened at that moment when they pulled them out. Also, right after that shot is a shot of the red lightsaber flying through the trees. I believe the series um, is eight episodes. Um, are the episodes 30 minutes or more like an hour? So about 30 minutes-ish, yeah. I would say some of them are a little bit longer. Like the final, I think it's 40 minutes. But there are also some that I think are barely 30 minutes. It's on average. I would say somewhere between like 30 and 35 minutes. So don't expect a really long, you know, 45 hour long episode, basically, guys. Um, do you consider this like a four hour movie? God, this is a long interview, right? <laughs> um... So we'll read a bit more, then we'll go through some chats, and uh, and then we'll carry on because we've got some uh, other bits and pieces to go through as well. Uh, so do you consider this uh, like a four-hour movie? Hedlund goes on to say, you know, I don't. I would consider Russian Doll that. I think that it was this continuous thing, like a really good album. It was meant to be sat and watched and listened to and all that kind of stuff, but I actually think that it's more of a weekly experience, and I think it's good that it's a weekly experience because I think when you're dealing with really heavy issues, especially in Star Wars, I think having a break for a week is actually a good idea because when Luke says in The Last Jedi it's time for the Jedi to end, it might be nice to have a week after that, you know what I mean? Like, what does that mean? Let's have a capital D discourse about it. So I don't see it as a four-hour movie, no. I mean, could you imagine? Mind you, we kind of got that in a trailer, didn't we? Uh, for The Last Jedi, when Luke said it's time for the Jedi to end and everyone went crazy about it. <laughs> so she wants to basically give us uh, something to think about to sit on, to stew on uh, one week to the next, which is brilliant because, you know, um, one of the best thing about being a Star Wars fan is kind of thinking, what if this happened? What if that happened? Um, you know, thinking about these scenarios and situations and theories, all a bit of fun, uh, for sure. Star Wars true crime, apparently so. Apparently so. Star Wars uh, fictional crime, I guess, technically. Um, I have mixed feelings about the Acolyte Tears. I'll give it an 8 out of 10, says Anthony, and mixed emotions about the project's existence in general. Okay, so what what kind of mixed emotions are we having here, Anthony? I'm curious, man. Um, honestly, I have a problem with Hedden thinking that Jedi don't believe they're able to be killed. The Nameless, um, the Drengear, the Nile, and the Martian Rue disproved that 100 years before. Yeah, I can see that. I can see what you're saying there. 
Do you think potentially though, like, I mean, a hundred years is a complete new generation. So do you think that potentially, because in the, you know, in these Jedi's lifetimes, for the most part, apart from the likes of maybe Yoda, uh, some of the older species in there as well, do you think potentially some of that comes from them never having experienced it in their lifetime? Because, you know, I mean, you might be like me, but so often, uh, so often something can happen and you'll be like, wow, I never thought... Or, or, or something can happen close close to home so it can be down the road in your town you just see uh, your street to a neighbor and you kind of think wow you know i'll kind of hear about that sort of stuff going on but it's a little bit close to home to to to, to really sink in and think it's actually going to happen to you or someone you know do you think it could be like a similar situation than that to the jedi uh, whereas it hasn't happened in their lifetimes they kind of think well it's probably not going to happen um kind of hard for them to relate to it the Leveler Killed Jedi. Um, it's in the High Republic novels, horrible and scary. The Leveler. I've not actually read the High Republic novels, but I do intend to start uh, properly um, in preparation for the Acolyte, for sure. Uh, but thanks for that, uh, Melissa. Appreciate it. So 100 years before episode one, do you think the Sith is Darth Tenebrous, Plagueis' master? It could well be. I mean, it could well be. I mean, I mean, Plagueis could... Be in there as well, I guess, you know. Uh, Plagueis could definitely be in there as well, depending on when exactly they set it. Um, but I don't think they fixed that date around it. So, I mean, he could potentially be in there, if not the very least be referenced as like a, um, a young prodigy, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, one character I kind of am thinking about a little bit in regards to the Acolyte would be, would be Yoda. You know, I'm kind of thinking, you know, who could they really... Because when we watch a show like the Kenobi show, um, and you got Qui-Gon at the end, you don't know that's going to happen if you don't look at the leaks. Um, and that's that's a big draw. You know, if they put Qui-Gon in the marketing, if they put Anakin... Well, they kind of did put Anakin a bit. If they put Anakin in the earlier mar marketing for Ahsoka, that'd be a big draw. So they're probably hiding something in this show somewhere that we don't know about. Maybe it could be one of the droids. Maybe it could be um, another character. But I think Yoda would be quite a prominent one. If he could appear at maybe one of the High Council meetings at some stage. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, Leslie Headland already has ideas for a potential season two of The Acolyte. So if the show comes out, fans love it, it gets great ratings. And I think, to be honest, guys, I think this is going to go one way or the other. I think, you know, looking at the trailer and looking at like nearly half a million people or over half a million people have disliked that trailer um, and like a hundred and just under 180,000 have liked it. Uh, eyes are on it, regardless if that's positive or if that's negative. People are going to be checked in on this trailer, especially for the first couple of episodes. So I think it's going to be a big... You know, it's going to be a big uh, a big release when it comes out for sure. Um, I think it's either going to go one way or the other. The first couple of episodes really need to nail it, I feel. Um, for them people to say, actually, you know what? It wasn't actually too bad. Let's let's stick around for the next episode, see what it's about. Um, because if it comes out and it's, it's slow or, you know, it doesn't really captivate people from the, from the offset, from the outset, um, then they could be in a bit of a sticky situation there. That's that's kind of for the people that are kind of watching it as a, not a diehard Star Wars fan, but as like a casual viewer or people that are going into it with a negative mindset already. Um, they'll be looking to be captivated and wowed straight away. And if that doesn't happen, it's not going to spell good news. People that go into it and they're going to watch the series regardless if the first episodes are strong or not. Um, it won't really make much difference to. Have you guys been working at all on the possibility of a season two? Do you view this as a one season show? What can you say to fans who might want more? And I just want to say, if you guys have been watching these streams for a little while, I called this years and years and years ago. Uh, as soon as the Acolyte, not the Acolyte, as soon as the High Republic was released or, or announced um, with their trailer announcements and they're going into this era, I said, you mark my words. They're building this out. They're building the stories, building the books, building all the background information, building the character, the worlds, uh, the stories of this time. They're building it out and eventually it's going to come into live action and eventually they're going to phase out the Skywalker saga, phase out that point of time, you know, whether it be the Clone Wars, whether it be, um, you know, the Rebellion, whether it be the new Jedi Order, the Ray movie that comes out, all of that will be phased out at some point. If this, this does well, 
then we're going to phase out of that whole timeline i feel and we're going to go on to the high republic and build a whole new story up from there i think that's really what they're going to do so Headloom goes on to say, I would say that when I pitched it, I definitely pitched it as a multi-season show. There are a lot of things at the end of this season that I think are narrative threads that are not tied up for sure. However, I am the type of writer that is not interested in an emotional cliffhanger. I want you to feel like you've had a particular type of catharsis and an emotional experience in watching those eight episodes because I like rewarding the audience with that. And I still think that means you can pepper in things like, I want to see where that's going to go. And oh, I didn't realize that person was related to that person in this way. And I'd like to see more. But there isn't something where you feel like you're on the edge of your seat uh, to have that catharsis. And then you have to wait two years. These things take forever to make. So I would hate to make a season that didn't feel complete even if it was still open even if it was still open for more story um and i, and I have to say like i i totally agree with that that line of thinking as well there's nothing worse than having that what happens next and it's not a netflix show which you can just scroll down for the next season <laughs> because you found it a few seasons in often happens to me um you have to wait a couple years there's nothing worse you know you're kind of like what's going to happen um, and then you take to the internet and then you get into these theories and then you get into these rabbit holes and then before you know it you look up and it's two o'clock in the morning you're like i've got to go to bed I've got, to, I've got to work tomorrow I've got to school tomorrow i've got things to do uh people to see places to be so yeah i kind of like the way that she's going to tie it up but it's going to leave you with just enough according to the uh to the creator there to to kind of think well you know what if season two comes out then i'm in for it so one of the things about streaming shows, I think the problem is there is such a huge break between seasons for fans. So I'm curious, have you figured out what season two would be? Do you have any scripts? If Disney said we want to make another season, how quick could you actually make it? Uh, we can make it pretty quickly. We definitely have a timeline. I have a lot of uh, ideas. And again, a lot of it was stuff that I told Kathleen early on in terms of where I'd like the season to go and the conflicts that I see happening specifically in the second season. Uh, but I've been working on stop on this for a very long time, so I'm definitely taking a much needed break before we get to the writers, get the writers room going. Uh, and I'd like to see how the show performs. I'm very interested in that. I'm interested in seeing, like you said, the ratings and seeing what are the things that people, I don't want to say it's in reaction to fan reaction, but you do get feedback at the end of a season, which is kind of nice just to be like, OK, those people hated that. It doesn't mean we don't do it. It just means we're armed with the information that that was an unpopular thing. So we do it anyway, but <laughs> what? What? Let me, let me get this right. So let me get this right. Let's start from here. I don't want to say it's in reaction to fan reaction, but you do get feedback at the end of the season, which is kind of nice. So just be like, okay, those people hated it. That doesn't mean we don't do it. It just means we're armed with the information that it wasn't an, uh, that it was an unpopular thing. So we can do it anyway. <laughs> um, but knowing that stuff I think is really good um, I think they would love to start it immediately they're very happy with the series but I need a break I also have a baby I don't know where the baby came from I know she's giving me a cold okay um, we know that Vern is in the acolyte played by Rebecca Henderson with other characters from the High Republic books make an appearance that's just about character there Okay, we'll see. This is about the next trailer then. Um, I think teaser trailers like that are great. You're teasing people about what's to come and then the next trailer is giving you a lot more. You know, one thing I would say about the trailer or the teaser is that whatever you think it is, it's something else. There's a lot there to take in, but I think that there's so much that isn't there that while it does tease you, there's so much more that I can't wait for you guys to see. Uh, so even though you're pulling from a bunch of episodes... There's so much more that I can't wait for you to see. So she doesn't really give much away about the final trailer, apart from there'll be a little bit more in there than what we had in the teaser, which of course is expected with it being probably, you know, 30 to 45 seconds longer. Uh, interesting, interesting. So it's kind of like giving me a little bit of an understanding on uh, the kind of the point of view that the Jedi are taking at this point in time when they're under some kind of threat. It's almost like disbelief in a way then that, you know, the, where the Jedi like we are the bee's knees, if you want to call it that. Who's really going to be murdering us? Is it even possible? There's no one powerful around us that's able to do that. Um, naive, naive. Absolutely. I agree with what Anthony said there. 
Yeah, I agree with what Anthony said. It is naive. Um, but again, I think that might come from, that might be a generational thing. Whereas this generation of Jedi, you know, if it's a hundred years before the Phantom Menace, and as Anthony says that, you know, if they haven't been threatened for about a hundred years, um, then a lot of these Jedi wouldn't have lived through that. And they might be a bit oblivious to it, a bit obnoxious to it even as well. So um yeah, we'll have to see we'll have to see how they play that card. Absolutely. Well, Headland star character Vanessa Rao, played by her significant other, um, the only original character from the High Republic books to appear in live action, is 117 years old and remembers. Yeah, well, I guess they would remember if they're 117 years old for sure. But I mean, in particular, that character there that says them lines in a trailer, he, he doesn't. Well, he might be 117 years old, but uh, or, or even older. But he could be younger. He could literally be as he looks, maybe like 30s. Where he wouldn't have experienced that. Do you think we'll see Plagueis being introduced in this show? Um, I would like it if they did. I would like it if they did. I don't know, though. I don't know. I mean, apparently the, 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 there's a Sith Master in here that we don't know about, I believe. I, I don't know. There were some old leaks that we had ages ago. And again, leaks can change. This was quite a while ago. Um, before they even started filming, I believe. So that could have been changed and moved around. Or it could be a little bit of a misdirect. Um, I would like to think, you know, if the dark side is rising and they're plotting against the Jedi and they're moving in the shadows, then Tenebrous Plagueis would be a part of that. Uh, and to be honest, quite frankly, I'd be a little bit disappointed if they aren't. But we'll, we'll have to see. Um, I have a growing suspicion, fear that the Acolyte may follow in the footsteps of the Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries and it will alter established canon or even contradict the EU law that some fans will love. Yeah, so that's uh, quite a concern that a lot of people have, Anthony. A lot of people have that. Uh, the only thing I would say, obviously I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't seen the show yet. It's not out yet. Um, I can see why people say that, you know, when the, the Jedi... They're confronted with a dark side threat. It's very much teetering on the, are they going to become aware of the Sith when they weren't meant to be aware of them at that point in time? Um, I understand that argument. We'll have to see how it plays out. There are ways they can go around it. There are ways they can go around it. They could annihilate every Jedi that comes across a dark side force user. Um, they could have the Jedi brush them off as being something other than a Sith. We've seen plenty of force users that aren't part of the Sith religion, um, cult, whatever, uh, use red lightsabers. So they could go down that path of, yes, a dark side force user. It isn't that title of Sith, though, uh, where they refer to that in The Phantom Menace. So there's ways around it, but it does it does, it does, does tread closely. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see how it plays out for sure. Okay, so. In regards to the trailer, and this is kind of funny because, you know, we've been talking about the trailer and how it's been ratioed to, and you know what, maybe I'll just pull it up quickly again just to see if the ratios increase it has wow so i think it has anyway correct me if i'm wrong on this guys but didn't this trailer like when we last looked at it about what 10 20 minutes ago maybe didn't it have 5000 and it was in the teens, weren't it? 5,000 and was it 17 or 19 uh, dislikes? Now it's at 5,020. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's being actively disliked. Actively disliked, which is kind of funny, which brings us on to the next article that we're going to quickly take a look at. Um, and this is from the official Star Wars account as well. Again, this came out just a couple of days after the Acolyte trailer. So... The Acolyte trailer breaks Lucasfilm records. Now, I've seen a lot of people saying probably the YouTube record for dislikes. And um, I don't know exactly, but I believe they are actually approaching that, that milestone, which is quite shocking. Uh, anyway, thanks to Star Wars fans, uh, the trailer launch for the Acolyte has been one to remember. Released yesterday, the trailer for the Acolyte garnered 51.3 million views in its first 24 hours. Now, this is just uh, not just on YouTube. This is across, you know, all all of their accounts so probably x probably instagram um you name it they kind of put them all together and add them all up 
This is a new digital only streaming record for any Lucasfilm Disney Plus series, surpassing every trailer for The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, Andor, Kenobi, and Ahsoka. We're grateful for your support and can't wait for you to experience the series, uh, which is absolutely insane. Now, the I think. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe we should just have a look. Maybe we should just have a look. Let's see how on you. Let's just base it on YouTube because I mean, let's 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 be frank. If you're going to look for a movie trailer or a series trailer, where are you going to watch it? You're not going to go on Instagram and type it in. Or you're going to watch it on YouTube. Um, I think most people will go to YouTube to watch a trailer, that kind of stuff. So let's have a look. Let's have a look, see how the Acolyte kind of stacks up with how the other trailers are doing. And of course, this won't be a, a, a massively fair, you know, comparison because some of these trailers have been up for months and years and some of them, the hype's died off completely. They don't get views anymore. Um, but we can see where they ended. We can see where the Acolyte is now and kind of make a little assumption, a little comparison there. So with the Acolyte, we're looking at 8.9 million views, six days old, so just under a week. Um, the Bad Batch actually got 2.7 million views. Now, that's kind of expected. The animated shows do tend to get a little bit less. Uh, I'll say a little bit less, kind of a chunk less. Um, these two are just like, you know, Disney Plus announcement trailers. Made a fourth be with your trailer. Complete Skywalker Saga is now on Disney Plus. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. That's actually got like 4.2 million views. That's quite good. Uh, Towers of the Jedi got 5.9, which is solid really solid um that's a re-upload of the trailer that's a star wars uk you can't really look at star wars uk they don't get as many views as the original star wars i'll tell you what let's go on to um let's go on to the star wars official star wars youtube channel to try it shall we This is going to be a slog, I can see it now. So let's try and skip through the clips. Can we... Ah, hang on. Can we search on YouTube channels? I don't know. Oh. Giving me timbers, we can. Nice, guys. We're in... We're in business, guys. We're in a business. We've got rid of the slog. Okay, so I can just type in trailer on the official Star Wars YouTube channel. Let's pull up all their trailers. This is where they officially release them. So yeah, Acolyte 8.9. Uh, the Kenobi show got 19 million views, which is massive. I mean, look at the drop-off compared to what the movie's getting. 110 for The Force Awakens. Even 50 for The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, Andor got 2.8 million views. But that was the official trailer. So the equivalent of that trailer... we. No, wait, hang on. So that was the teaser trailer that got 2.8 million views for Andor. So the Acolyte's already at 8.9. So it's definitely smashing Andor in terms of views. Under the Kenobi one, but again, that's been out for two years. Eclipse got 21 million views, which is insane. The Andor official trailer got 11. So on that basis, the Acolyte official trailer should do pretty well too. I mean, the Rise of Skywalker teaser got 36. Bad Batch, 2.7. The official trailer for Kenobi got 13. So the Andor official trailer was only 2 million views under the Kenobi official trailer, which is interesting. First ever trailer for The Mandalorian got in 26 million views, which is huge. Ahsoka got 9.4. So the teaser for Ahsoka actually done better. It got 16. And then the official trailer got 9.4. It's interesting how that works out. Some shows the teaser, tra teaser trailer does better. Some shows the uh, the official trailer does better. So we'll see what one the Acolyte is. Mandalorian season 3 teaser trailer got 7.3. So already the Acolyte's got more views than the Mandalorian season 3 trailer. So give it a little comparison there. It's done pretty well. It's done, yeah, it's done pretty well. Hmm.
You know what? Let's um Let's go down. Uh a bit of history, shall we? I have to sort this out on my own. Without the council. Who's up for watching some old, old, old Star Wars trailers? Theatrical trailer from 1982, Return of the Jedi. Uh, the ratio of downvotes uh, down could be attributed to a list of things. Headland's past and a possible involvement in a current lawsuit leveled at Disney uh, at Lucasfilm Limited. Uh, the message being number two and KK picking it. <laughs> um, so I'm not aware of... Um, so I know a little bit about a past, but I'm not aware of a current involvement in a, a lawsuit leveled at Lucasfilm. Uh, I don't know about that, to be honest with you. Uh, the message... I can get where people are coming from from that. Um, you know what? Like kind of um, not not you at all, Anthony. But I see a lot of people online, you know, um, streaming, talking about the acolyte, uh, and while they're absolutely correct, you know, they're absolutely correct in some elements of what they say, you know, uh, a lot of people are going towards the route of pointing out sexual orientation of some of the. Uh, some of the cast, some of the, the crew. I don't think that should have anything to do with it, really, you know? I don't think that should have anything to do with it at all. Uh, but people are. People are out there saying it. To me, it doesn't really matter. Regardless, if the story is good, then I'm happy to watch it. Um, yeah, regardless, you know, orientation, ethnicity, race. If the story is good, I'll be happy to watch it. Uh, do I think they should cast just on that basis? No. Um, but if they're the right fit for the character they're trying to convey or you know they're the most talented the best at doing that certain performance then if it makes the story better it doesn't really matter to me um, but I can see a lot of people out there that aren't happy with that um, I can't understand it myself uh, KK picking it <laughs> yeah Ahsoka got 16 million that is uh, well yeah I mean we'll see how it stacks up to the acolyte when it comes out full blown you know and when they release the official trailer uh one will obviously do better than the other you know <laughs> they're not going to be dead level but um some of the shows they release they kind of do uh either the teaser trailer uh does okay and then the official trailer blows up or sometimes the teaser blows up and the official trailer um does pretty poorly in comparison the bad vibes that a substantial portion of Star Wars fans got from too many of the writers of the High Republic books um, who are antagonistic to disgruntled fans. Oh, who oh who were antagonistic to disgruntled fans? I have no idea about that either. What happened there, Anthony? Um, enlighten us, please, my friend. Female-centric promos. Uh, this is the way. A lot of the down folks are one. Bots, uh, the group that are trying to get Disney to change. That started years ago after the movie started to suck after the Avengers. I think there is an element of, you know, some people dislike the show, some people dislike the trailer. You know, trailer's not gonna be for everyone. Every video on YouTube, I think, you know, if you get over a certain amount of views, you're gonna get dislikes. It happens, you know, it happens, regardless of what you do. Um, people dislike videos, that's their entitled to do that. I do feel like there has been, you know, certain groups that have just latched on to it's getting a lot of downvotes. Let's just kind of add fuel to the fire and make it worse. Even if they generally do like the trailer. Um that's just my assumption, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes, I guess. We'll see how it goes, I guess. Famous last words. So let's take it back. Let's take it back. Take it back to the golden years. Oh, wait, I didn't even want this version, man. Let's go back to the theatres, 1982. I thought it'd be kind of fun just to watch some of the old trailers. A climactic clash between the forces of good and evil. Return to a galaxy far, far away. You know, I wish I had a voice like that. I think these streams would be so much better. And the videos would be so much better if I had that voice. Maybe I can change it. Bit of uh, post-production.
heart of a hero. The courage of a rebel. The strength of a leader. The loyalty of comrades. The power of the force. The cunning of the enemy. A destiny revealed. Is Darth Vader my father? A legend fulfilled. If this was like a modern Star Wars trailer, right? It would probably end here. And they would show you that shot, and that's it. <laughs> you wouldn't see any of this. An epic of heroes, villains, and aliens from a thousand worlds. They kind of make it look like Luke joined him. The quest continues. The circle closes. The saga lives on. Return of the Jedi begins May 25th at a theater in your galaxy. In your galaxy. So, um, I don't know about you guys, but when I watch that, it kind of gets me hyped up a little bit. And I'm like, man, I want to go and watch it. <laughs> Even though it's, it's been out for a while. Um, right. Let's, uh, let's take a browser empire, shall we? You know, some of these theatrical, original theatrical trailers, obviously I wasn't born when they came out. I wish I was. I wish I could have watched them in the theatres. But uh, um, yeah, I wasn't around for some of them, needless to say. Uh, so some of these, it's the first time I've been actually watching the original theatrical release trailers. Uh, around 2021, some of the authors of the High Republic books had very heated social media exchanges with Star Wars fans who disliked Disney's handling of Star Wars and it affected the reception of the books. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that, to be honest with you. Um, all I can say to that is what happened to the customer always being right, you know? <laughs> Could you imagine if you worked in most jobs and you started arguing with a customer or a client? Um, you probably wouldn't be in that job for very long. I know it's a little bit different. You know, they're hired to write a book and after that, uh, you know, they might have a contract or so, but ultimately they're self-employed, I believe. So it's a little bit different, but still the principal stance, I think. Um, this will age me, but the theatre I saw these in had lines wrapped around it two times from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, 10 p.m. with four hours wait a different time for sure that is In our galaxy. the thing is though man um they're, they're kind of like i bet they're like the memories you'll never forget though they're the memories you'll never forget like probably peak peak anticipation and hype for star wars is uh is something that a lot of fans these days especially my generation you know who were maybe really young when, who were maybe really young when, uh, you know, the prequels came out, they weren't around for the original trilogy. Uh, I would have loved to have just witnessed it as it was when it first released. Uh, we, we, I mean, I can't remember waiting outside for the Revenge of the Sith because I was so young at the time. I think I was, what, um, 10? Yeah, about 10. So I don't remember. What the hype was like around that movie uh the force awakens um you know the hype going into the force awakens i went to my theater uh for the midnight viewing first time i've ever been to a midnight viewing of a, a movie 
Um, no movie would move me enough to go to watch it at midnight and and not get home and go sleep till about what three half three maybe a little bit later. Um, no movie's ever done that. But when Star Wars: The Force Awakens came out, I was there. And to be honest, it was a, it was a new experience for me. I was seeing people dressed up, uh, you know, cosplaying outside the theater at midnight. It was uh, yeah. Even that was an experience. Imagine what it was like back in the day. Imagine that. Where do we need to go here? We need to go... What? So here's the Star Wars. So apparently this is the Star Wars teaser trailer. Somewhere in the so it's mad. Like I think I've seen this one actually. I didn't know it was a teaser. I thought it was the actually official trailer. Um, it's mad. So this teaser trailer would have had to have captivated people to go and watch that movie in the cin cinema. Uh, and it turned into what it did. This is the same guy that narrated the other trailer. Summers when it happens, guys. Nearly summer now. Hyped. So we've got. So we've got the. Uh, huh? Ah, there we go. Just wondering when the music went, man. So we've got the Bad Batch. The Bad Batch is doing pretty well. I'm enjoying the Bad Batch, actually. Um, you know, uh, it's not a secret. You know, I wasn't. <sighs> I thought season one and two were right, they were good. Um, but season three I'm actually really into. Um, so we've got the Bad Batch, we're about halfway through now roughly. Uh, that's going to take us up to May the 1st. This is how I think it's going to go. Bad Batch is going to take us up to May the 1st. May the 4th, uh, I think they'll drop the official Acolyte trailer, the proper full version Acolyte trailer. We'll see what's in there, see how that goes. Um, of course we're going to be live. We're absolutely going to be live on Star Wars Day, shooting that shooting that SHIT and talking about Star Wars stuff reacting to the trailer breaking it down live the rest of it probably before I go and watch The Phantom Menace 25th anniversary so I'll be in that real Star Warsy, buzzy hyped mood maybe I'd even like paint my face as Darth Maul I don't know yet maybe you could spike the hair up to make it look like horns who knows we could do something crazy like that honestly um, so I think we're going to get you know the Bad Bash is going to take us up to May 4th um, and then from May the 4th onwards I think we're you know, going to get the Acolyte trailer. You know, maybe we'll get like a, a making of for the Ahsoka show, which I've been kind of wanting now for a little while. You know, um, we get them for the Mandalorian. We have them for the Book of Boba Fett. We haven't got one for Ahsoka behind the scenes. I think it's definitely there. It's definitely there. We just need to wait for it to come out. And maybe May the 4th will be that day. Um, and then I think, you know, from May onwards, they're really going to 
really going to dig in with the Acolyte marketing. They've already started now doing these articles, interviews. Um, obviously, the trailer, teaser trailer came out, but I think it's really going to be an Acolyte field summer. And then May is going to be about marketing, talking about the Acolyte. Essentially, that's what they're going to do. And then we're going to get it from uh, June. And that's going to take us, what, 5th of June, so 5th of July. Going to take us around August time. Uh, maybe we'll get some Towns of the Jedi after that Star Wars game. Uh, I think we're in it good and solid now, guys. I think we're in the clear. Uh, and hopefully, you know, the Acolyte comes out. And hopefully, it does really well because it's a really good show. That's what uh, that's what I want. Uh, good day, mate. How's it going? What's up, fam? Sublight is in the house. Oh, look at that sub. Nice, shiny new, uh, shiny new badge on your name as well. I like it. You've got the official just Star Wars blue color. Actually... Now that color blue isn't actually just for the logo. That color blue is actually the blue of a lightsaber. So all of the badges for members on the channel are coded after a lightsaber. Going all the way from, I think you've got, you've got all sorts on there. Uh, let me, let me have a butcher's actually, because I'm can't actually remember. And I remember I actually spent a long time making these badges um, and getting them just right. Let's see what we've got. So the first badge is the red one. Then we've got the purple. We've got the green. Then we've got the blue, which is what you're on now, sub. Um, after that blue, shall I reveal what one you're on to next? You're going on to the yellow, which I think is very convenient. Um, because at this rate, you'll be on the yellow badge for when the yellow sabers hit our screens in the Acolyte. Uh, then you go Ahsoka white, then you've got like an orangey colour. Um, and then finally, you go to the dark saber, which is a mixture of white and black. But it's all crackly and it looks really sick. Uh, so I spent, <laughs> I spent a bit of time making them. Um, but no, thanks for your support on that, so I appreciate it. Um, in turn, it's just snowballed. Since the books do have elements about them that are controversial, plus the writers are long-term contributors to the High Republic, who haven't left it yet. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it doesn't affect the overall you know if the acolyte turns out to be a really good show i'd hate for it to be dragged down by by uh things that have happened in the past um with i mean effectively you know the acolyte uh, uh, from as far as i can tell wouldn't be related to the actual writers of the high republic it's just they've developed stories in that time space uh, so hopefully it wouldn't be affected by that if it's a good show i want it to shine if it's a bad show then the bad show we'll have to wait and see uh the phantom menace marketing was incredible will never be matched again i don't think the force awakens came close the force awakens i mean i i can't remember the phantom menace marketing i was i was when the phantom menace came out i was four you know what was i four Yes, I was four when the Phantom Menace came out. They're in my age now. Uh, <laughs> the Force Awakens came close. I experienced a great hype for The Empire Strikes Back. Our family saw it on opening weekend. The closest experience I've had to it since was Avengers Infinity War. Our audience cheered at familiar characters. Um, I love it when you when you go into a theater and uh, there's such a, a sick movie or a hyped moment uh, or something you're like, whoa. Um, and, and the audience reacts, you know? I do love it when it happens. I remember Mark Hamill was in one of the theatres that showed this promo. After the last line, someone in the theatre said, and straight to your TV channel next weekend. What? <laughs> oh no. Imagine that. Yeah. Um, I'd love to be proven wrong, but yeah, Phantom's lead up was super special to be a fan. So yeah, I mean... It's hard to gauge, isn't it? Like where where the interest and where the hype level is for Star Wars at the moment, because we're only getting Disney Plus shows. Um, you know, TV shows don't do as big as you know your big box office, your big theatrical releases. So, I I, I think you know once the movies come back, especially the Mandalorian and Grogu movie, pulling from the audience it has from Disney Plus already, go into the big screen. I reckon that can crack some big numbers on that trailer, and I get that. I reckon that will get a lot of interest. And I think they'll put some budget into that marketing for that movie as well. So, um, yeah, it's difficult to see, isn't it, though? When you look at the trailers and you're looking at, like, you know, the Acolyte, okay, it's only two days, but 8.9 8 million views. Ahsoka was, what, 13 or 16? Um, the Kenobi show was, like, 19, their biggest trailer. And then you look at The Force Awakens, 100 and something million. 
um, The Last Jedi, pretty high numbers as well. Even The Rise of Skywalker is like double the double the first season of The Mandalorian. Um, so yeah, they just get more interest. Just get more interest. Uh, yeah, it would depend on one thing. If it's 28 to 30 minutes long for only eight episodes, you have to bring it every episode. If they did it, daddy like some of the other Star Wars TV shows, it would fail. Um, yeah, this is the way. I absolutely agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. If we sideshow and catch up with Jack Black or someone else, like, like in The Mandalorian Season 3 for The Acolyte, and it's a 28-minute episode, I'll be pissed. <laughs> and I know a lot of people will be pissed. Um, hopefully they don't. Hopefully they do bring it every episode. And hopefully, um, like we read in that interview earlier on, Okay, some episodes, you know, it might go off and it might go in a different direction, but as long as that episode ends up with us being here, it might take us this way around, but as long as we still end up here by the end of that episode and we're a bit closer to the overall story, um, then for me, I'm happy, you know? A bit of fun in the middle is expected. It's Star Wars. It's, it is fun. Um, but as long as we are making progress and actually getting somewhere, you know, it's so often in episodes of The Mandalorian Season 3, you would kind of move forward, then you'd move backwards, then you'd find yourself doing flipping circles for a couple of episodes, then you'd take a big step forwards, then backwards, a couple more circles, and then you're at the final two episodes. So hopefully it doesn't go down that route, but we'll see how it goes. I am, for one, you know, the teaser trailer, I thought it was good. Not the best trailer in the world, but definitely not the worst. And I don't think, you know, based on that trailer, I don't think it deserves that ratio. I think that ratio, like it's been mentioned by Anthony and some of the others in the chat, I think that ratio comes from issues around Star Wars, around the High Republic, around he uh, Leslie Headland, rather than that specific trailer and maybe even that specific show, project concept of that show. Um, I don't think it deserves, based on that trailer alone, that ratio. Uh, I think a lot of it comes from external factors around the show itself. Uh, we'll have to see when it comes out. One thing's for sure, it's definitely going to have the chance. It's definitely going to have the chance. Unlike with Andor, where Andor was very, uh, you know, it was very, I think, poorly marketed. Um, it was a very good show, very strong show, um, but it's very poorly marketed, even right from the name of Andor, you know? If they called it something else, maybe, maybe coined it with a term like you know not saying it should be called the rebellion but maybe linked it to the term of the rebellion being formed rather than andor it would have done much better uh, but that really never had the potential to go through that big audience of a lot of people watching it and checking it out uh, so it never really got that big amount of views jack Light's not going to have that problem it don't seems it doesn't seem so so uh i'm interested to see how it pans out uh but on that note guys i'm gonna love you i'm gonna leave you we'll strike while the iron's hot um i hope you all enjoyed the bad batch this week we'll be back here same time next week uh for probably more acolyte updates uh let's talk about the bad batch next week i think this week's episode is going to be a big one um we're kind of getting teased aren't we we're kind of getting teased by the people in the know the people that worked on the bad batch that this week or next week might be the return of Ventress. so we'll wait and see if it's a big one of course we might jump on a little bit earlier on wednesday and talk about it um but until next time guys thanks for checking out uh thanks for hanging with the channel thanks for showing your support by being here um hope you found it a little bit of fun hope you know hope i've done okay as your host today but i'll catch you later guys uh much love may the force be with you and uh yeah all the best. Mic drop. And that is over and out. Just Star Wars out. Yeah. Peace. Thank you.